Hi, my name is Taryn Beaver. I'm a student um, taking Medical Physiology 1010 and today I'm going to be discussing the enteric nervous system and a summary of the short and long reflexes within. Uh, to start off, the enteric nervous system uh, maintains autonomous control over the gastrointestinal functions. Those functions are motility, secretion, and nutrient absorption within the gastrointestinal or digestive system. This system shares many features with our central nervous system, but is on its own um, significantly independent. Uh, it was first recognized over 100 years ago by a couple of scientists who discovered during dissection that segmented out pieces of digestive tissue still um, had reflexes occurring within them. This observation suggested that the human enteric nervous system received stimuli and acted on those reflexively without any input from the central nervous system. I've since discovered many um, systems and features shared within both of those nervous systems. First, there are intrinsic neurons that lie completely within the gut wall, much like interneurons that lie completely within the CNS. Primarily, there are two. First is the submucosal plexus, which is contained within the middle layer of the wall, the submucosa. It is made of connective tissue, large blood vessels, and lymph vessels. The submucosal plexus innervates epithelial and smooth muscle cells in the muscularis mucosa. In the outer layer um, and the outer muscular layer of the GI tract, you find the myenteric plexus, the second set of in intrinsic neurons. And this is a network that controls and coordinates the phasic, circular, and longitudinal muscle activity found within that layer of muscle. Secondly, there are neurotransmitters and neuromodulators that have been identified that act specifically within the GI tract for communication and initiation of any reflexes. Um, more than 30 have been found and they are classified as specific GI peptides and hormones. Another shared feature is glial support cells are found in the plexus. Um, one difference is that the GI glia are found to be more similar to astroglia in the CNS than Schwann cells found in the peripheral nervous system. Um, there's a diffusion barrier with decreased permeability at the uh, enteric capillaries, which is similar to the blood-brain barrier. And finally, there is an integration of reflexes and responses that are all originated within the CNS and don't have any communication outside um, from outside neural signals. Now, although the enteric nervous system shares many similarities with the central nervous system, it has some level of and it has some level of autonomy over the GI tract, we still find very complex interactions within the enteric nervous system, CNS, endocrine, and immune systems. And I will continue to, to discuss um, some of the known interactions, but it's important to know that scientists are still investigating many of these pathways. So this is an image taken directly out of the Silverthorne text. It's found on page 665 in the 8th edition. Um, this this uh, image is going to depict the integration of sh both short and long reflexes, which I will discuss in the following slides. Um, centered in the gray box, we find right here, centered in the gray box, um, we find the enteric nervous system, which commonly is referred to as the little brain. Um, it, in, in that, it contains sensory receptors and neurons and interneurons and enteric neurons. You can see that the ENS receives stimuli both from local sensory receptors, which include distension, presence of food, osmolarity, and acid levels, as well as cephalic stimuli, which is external 
coming from both the CNS um, afferent receptors are integrated through the CNS, but also there is some um, external. They don't have to originate within the CNS specifically. As, um, as the ENS receives stimuli, it integrates and sends out responses via the myenteric plexus to coordinate muscular activity and via the submucosal plexus to innervating the epithelial layer of some smooth muscle. So short light reflexes are those that originate and are integrated by the enteric nervous system without any outside input. Um, when signals are received in the nerve plexus, at, the nerve plexus act as their own little brain. This little brain receives stimuli via sensory receptors in the lumen of the gut, often in the epithelial layer, and carries out responses with just the use of interneurons and enteric neurons. The submucosal plexus found in the submucosal layer receives sensory input from the, from the lumen, such as stretch, the presence of, cell, of food, acid changes, um, and output control secretion by secretory epithelial cells lining the stomach and small intestine. The myenteric plexus receives output signals that change the G GI gastrointestinal gut motility. Long reflexes are those that originate in the central nervous system. Uh, no matter the origin, they are integrated through the central nervous system, I should say. Some reflexes do not or do originate in the enteric nervous system and then require that higher power of central nervous involvement, like classic neural reflexes, where the stimulus is received and transmitted to the CNS along a sensory afferent neuron. Other reflexes originate outside of the GI tract, and these are referred to as cephalic reflexes. There are two types of cephalic reflexes, feed-forward and emotional. Uh, with feed-forward reflexes, stimulus is received through senses such as sight, smell, taste, the sound of food cooking, um, they act to prepare the gastrointestinal tract for incoming food. A good example of this is waking to the smell of bacon cooking or hearing it sizzling when you hear and then your stomach rumbling and you begin to salivate. Emotional reflexes are a more elusive, uh, less well-known feed-forward response, um, and they indicate influence on the GI tract depending on an individual's range of emotions. Uh, these outcomes can vary differently between the visuals, individuals. Um, the same stressors can cause opposite emotional reflexes to occur in a person, but good examples are the feeling of butterflies in your stomach when you become nervous. And autonomic control is, is typically um, promoted by the parasympathetic nervous system and inhibited by the sympathetic nervous system, but both are um, indicated and important. So um, throughout the digestive tract, there are three phases that occur with integration of the enteric nervous system and the CNS to allow for digestion to occur. There are four primary functions of, of the digestive system, and those include secretion, digest digestion, absorption, and motility of food and wastes. The enteric and central nervous systems work together through the process of digestion. This process begins before, even, before food is even ingested and until it leaves the body. The initial phase of digestion can begin before food even enters the GI tract. External cell, smells, sights, and sounds, or even the thoughts of food, can cause chain responses from the CNS as feed-forward feed reflexes to prepare for incoming food. You can identify these responses yourself because we have all experienced our mouths watering and heard our stomach, stomachs rumbling, which I have already discussed. Stimuli for the upcoming meal activates neurons in the medulla oblongata to send messages through the vagus nerve in the enteric nervous system to begin the process of salivation. 
saliva containing a combination of water. Saliva contains a combination of water, ions, mucus, and enzymes that begin the chemical digestion process in the mouth. Food is also chewed and then swallowed, both of which are reflex actions involving skeletal and smooth muscle. And as food travels down the epiglottis and enters the next phase, the gastric phase, we transition from the use of skeletal muscle to smooth muscle. The gastric phase is largely, con largely controlled by short reflexes received and integrated within the enteric nervous system itself. As food enters the stomach, receptors are able to identify both di the distension of the stomach organ itself and that food containing proteins have enters it, entered its lumen. Because the stomach is a storage vessel, it controls the rate and amount of food being emptied into the small intestine and thus controls the rate of motility. I actually found a few articles um, discussing motility and um, some gastroparesis and um, one in article by gastroenterologists discussed the rate and regulation of GI motility and noticed that certain foods ingested actually affect the rate of digestion and feelings of hunger or satiety um, with the release of hormones responded um, to the ingestion of those foods. When proteins enter the stomach, uh, short reflexes induce G cells to sec secrete gra gastrin into the blood. This is one example. The hormone gastrin stimulates parietal cells to secrete gastric acid, which in turn stimulates the release of pepsinogen, which eventually becomes pepsin, important in breaking down proteins. What is notable is that while this example of gastrin is acting via a short reflex, it can also be triggered via parasympathetic neurons of the CNS. So this is just a quick example of um, dual integration by both nervous systems. Uh, finally, in the intestinal phase, uh, we see chyme travel from the stomach um, to the small intestine, um, the duodenum of the small intestine. The majority of food digestion occurs within the small intestine, and like during the gastric phase, stretch receptors plus acid receptors create a feed-forward response uh, to initiate enzymatic secretions and peristalsis. This is done through um, the myenteric plexus and the submucosal plexus. Proteins, carbohydrates, and fats are broken down into small, smaller molecules that can be more easily absorbed, and their presence is identified um, by the submucosal ple plexus lining the epithelial layer of the lumen. Um, then, as chyme is moved via innervation from the myenteric plexus, uh, chyme enters the colon, and water is the primary um, substance absorbed. That is going to finish up my discussion of the enteric nervous system and its uh, integration of short and long reflexes. Thank you.